created, okay? Number two, the less easy method, but probably cheaper. <laughs> Hello guys, it's Hannah. So today I'm doing a video all about study tips. We're finally nearing the end of the year, which means a lot of finals and exams and things like that are probably coming up for a lot of you, so I thought this would be the perfect time to make one of these videos. I want all of you to do amazing on your exams, so let's get straight into this video. I think I'm losing my mind Trying to stay inside the line One of the number one tips that I would always, always, always say is to study when you know you are most productive. For me personally, I am not much of a morning person, but I usually like to set an alarm for around 8.30ish. That way I can chill a little bit on my phone, get out of bed, eat breakfast, and get straight to work, and I'll study for six hours-ish, and by the time it's around three o'clock, I'll be done, and I can still do stuff with my day, whereas if I started at like one-ish, I would just end up spending my entire day focusing on school, and it just gives me a ton less stress and allows me to feel more productive, but if you know you work better in the evening, schedule yourself to do that. When I do get ready though, one thing I always try to remember is to change. I don't know what it is, but somehow just sitting in my pajamas or sitting in like a huge sweater or anything of that kind makes me feel super unproductive. So I try to pick out something that's comfortable, but still makes me feel like I've kind of gotten up and gotten ready. So just putting on a little bit of jewelry or anything like that always helps me. It's all good on the surface. Show me what's under one of the most important things for me is having a clean space when I'm studying. So whenever I have stuff laying around that I'm not using, it just gets me distracted. So I try to just take everything that I know I won't be using and put it on my dresser just to get it out of the way and to just keep me on task. Along with that, I also put my phone somewhere where I can't see it. So usually that's in a different room or in a drawer somewhere because then I also don't have the temptation to go on that. I don't know about you guys, but I would pick English over math any day, so that's what I'm going to start off with. One thing that I've learned is that whenever I'm studying, I always start off with studying or doing whatever project that I know that I'll enjoy doing the most, because that warms up my brain a little bit, and it's also actually going to release dopamine, which makes you happier and makes you want to continue doing what you're doing, and in that sense, once you've gotten started, it makes you want to continue. I was doing a little bit of research and as horrible as it sounds, going on your phone during study breaks can actually be really, really bad for you because your brain isn't able to absorb the information that you may have just gone over as well. So what I recommend doing during breaks is either eating a little bit of a snack just because it's really bad for you to be studying on an empty stomach or getting a little bit of movement in, whether that's through dancing to a little bit of music or actually getting outside. One of my friends was telling me that whenever she takes study breaks, what she does is she takes her dog out for a walk and again, this movement is going to release dopamine and it's just going to put you in a generally better mood. Plus, you won't feel like you've just been sitting stuck at your desk all day. I used to think schedules were a horrible way to study because I would end up just falling behind and I wouldn't make them realistic. But in reality, if you plan your days out in a realistic and productive way, you'll get a ton more work done than just telling yourself that you're actually going to study without knowing exactly what you're going to focus on. When it came to scheduling for me, I just kind of went with whatever I knew that I needed to work on the most and I didn't plan it according to hour just because then I could work at my own pace, but it all depends on the person. I know people that actually schedule their study schedules to be the same as their school schedules because then they're following the exact pattern that they're used to. And then lastly, in terms of the schedule, make sure to split up your subject into specific topics or specific things that you need to tackle and make goals according to that. This way you're not sitting yourself down to study math and just dawdling around and just wasting your time because you don't know exactly what you're going to be focusing on. Because a lot of studying tends to be through watching YouTube videos and just general work online, it's so easy to get distracted and start going on YouTube and online shopping or whatever it is. So I actually like to put goals and things on my actual laptop screen because then I'm reminded constantly of what I'm supposed to be doing. If you're one of those people that generally just struggles with sitting yourself down and getting motivated to actually start working, one thing that I would 10 out of 10 recommend doing is making it something to look forward to. So two things that I like to do is actually taking my stuff to a new cafe or somewhere that I haven't been before because then it makes me excited to go there or through making plans with a friend that I know I can be productive with. That way I look forward to actually seeing my friend and it just gets me off my butt and moving a little bit. Didn't 
through different studies that have been done in the past, testing yourself has actually been proven to be one of the best ways to study. When we have study material right in front of us, it's so easy for us to just read through something and assume that we know it when in reality we don't retain the information as well as we think we do. Past papers literally save your life. This booklet has four in it, this one has two, this one has three, and then I also have a practice English exam. There's such a broad range of questions and the extra practice honestly helps you way, way more than just writing and copying down notes. Until a little while ago, I was actually never really encouraged to do past examinations. And now that I've started doing them, I've realized how much of a good way they are to test yourself. If I could choose one way to study for the rest of my life, it would be through past papers. And if your school doesn't encourage it as much as maybe some others do, I really recommend just going up to your teacher and asking if there's any online or any that they can provide for you to practice on because they are insanely helpful. Plus, putting yourself in exam conditions also just gets your brain used to the idea of what it's going to be like she was my this may sound stupid but recording yourself helps a ton the circulatory system consists of four the study method obviously works for basically any subject but the one that i specifically used it for was my languages class because i had to memorize an oral and it was the best thing that I could have decided to do. It takes you a while to get used to listening to your voice, but it was so easy to just play it wherever I wanted without having to pull out a notebook to read the whole thing through myself. Plus, being taught something is a better way to retain information than just reading through it. So in a sense, this kind of mimics that, and in addition to it, it's just very, very practical. Hopefully you found some of those tips helpful, and if not, at least this video motivated you a little bit. Obviously, this doesn't have to be used exactly for exams. This could be used for projects, for just being more productive in general, or just tests that you have throughout the year. I wish you all the best of luck in your exams, whether you're taking IB, GCSE, if it's just finals, whatever it is. And just remember the amount of work that you do put in is the stuff that counts. So if you do end up doing horribly all of your exams, just know that you tried your best and there's nothing you could have done to change that. So don't hold yourself too accountable for things that do end up going badly. And if you're new here and haven't subscribed to my channel, the button is right down below, which you probably know because it's YouTube and it's not that hard to figure out. I love you all to the moon and back and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!